Welcome back to the channel family and another podcast. Today we're in the seventh chapter of Nehemiah. Very interesting to think of righteousness, goodness and truth being established upon the earth. Um, and because of the curse and the natural conditions, men and women often uh, attach spirituality to things. I've discussed this before, you know, persons have statues. Uh, someone a couple of weeks ago asked me if I could help them how to do it, tell them how to do the rosary because their parent died and it was their bur their funeral. And I said, well, I've never, I, I, I can't tell you anything about the rosary. You know, I don't know anything about it other than it's some beads that you repeat certain slogans, uh, certain things that you're told to do. But I can't tell you anything about it. So persons attribute spirituality to things. So the re-establishment of Jerusalem um, as the throne of Jehovah, the house of Jehovah, the great temple of Solomon, um, and all its uh, vast array of rooms and uh, regalia uh, and all different artifacts made of gold, silver, bronze and diamonds, the Ark of the Covenant, all these precious things, the testimony, the bronze laver, the pillars, all the various ornaments and decorations and all the utensils, and all the special clothing of the priests, all these things meant things, you know. And to this day, if you speak with uh, a lot of professing believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, um, they attribute great significance to such things to this day, you know. And that's why people say, Oh, I, I go to church, you know, and they go along to a building, and therein is perhaps statues and uh, uh, an architecture and stained glass windows. And, men and even women nowadays in, in dresses, you know, and they they claim to have a certain position with God and with men and uh, persons are doing great significance to these things. So the establishment of Jerusalem, the walls of the city, the house of the Lord was a very precious and wonderful thing at that time. And so it's very precious to consider uh, this great work that Nehemiah had been involved in for many years. So we saw in the previous chapter, friends, the wall was finished on the 25th of El to specific time. And when the enemies heard of it, all the nations were afraid round about. They were much cast down in their own eyes and they perceived that this work was wrought by our God. Wonderful thing for, for uh, those that do not profess to serve the God of Israel, those that do not uh, proclaim the Lord God Almighty, Yahweh Elohim and Yeshua HaMashiach, to revere God and to know that something that's happening upon earth is a work of God. Uh, very precious things to contemplate. And of course, in a rapidly approaching day, uh, all the persons that live in the natural land of Israel will realize that they are actually property, children. Uh, they are purchased possessions doubly owned by the Lord Jesus Christ. And they live through the death of Christ. They live as a direct result of the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ. And their every breath, their every movement, their very existence is as a direct result of the sufferings 2,000 years ago of God's precious Son. So, as I say, in a rapidly approaching day, that will be the case. Think of it, friends. Think of all the Jews down the last 2,000 years that have rejected the reality of the Lord Jesus Christ, that have <clears throat> judged themselves unworthy of eternal life, that have rejected the testimony of the Mosiach Yeshua, that have been announcing to each other that they're waiting for their Messiah for those 2,000 years. Think of it to this day, friends. You've got a lot of rabbis now and uh, commentators on, on jury, on, on the Jewish belief system, um, on YouTube and on other platforms that they talk for hours and they contend about the Lord Jesus Christ on these platforms and they, uh, they try to deny the scriptures, they deny the Son of God, they deny the blood atonement, um, they deny the purposes of God the sonship of Christ, the messiahship of Christ. They 
Um, they reject the one through whom they live, move and have their being. Think of it. And think what it will be, friends, to the minds of men when mortals truly realise that their very existence, their very breath, every good thing they have ever thought, spoke or done, is as a direct result of the finished work of Christ. Nehemiah chapter 7. And it came to pass when the wall was built and I'd set up the doors, that the doorkeepers and the singers and the Levites were appointed. And I gave my brother Hanani and Hananiah, the ruler of the citadel, charge over Jerusalem, for he was a faithful man and feared God above many. And I said to them that the gates of Jerusalem should not be opened till the sun was hot, and that they should shut the doors and bar them while they stood by, and that there should be appointed watchers of the inhabitants of Jerusalem, every one in his watch, and every one over against his house. Now the city was large and great, but the people in it were few, and no houses were built. And my God put into my heart to gather together the nobles and the rulers and the people for registration by genealogy. And I found a genealogical register of those that had come up at the first. And I found written in it, these are the children of the province that went up out of the captivity of those that had been carried away whom Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, had carried away, and who came again to Jerusalem and to Judah, everyone to his city. Those who came with Zerubbabel, Yeshua, Nehemiah, Azariah, Ramiah, Nahamani, Mordecai, Bilshan, Mispereth, Bigvi, Nehum, Barna, the number of the men of the people of Yisrael, the children of Parosh, 2,172, the children of Shephatiah, 372, the children of Arar, 652, the children of Pahath Moab, of the children of Yeshua and Yoab, 2,816, the children of Elam, 1,254, the children of Zatu, 845, the children of Zakai, 760, the children of Binui, 648, the children of Bibai, 628, the children of Asgad, 2,322, the children of Adonai came, 667. The children of Bigvi, 2067. The children of Adin, 665. The children of Ater, of the family of Hezekiah, 98. The children of Hashem, 328. The children of Bezai, 324. The children of Haref, 112. The children of Gibeon, 95. The men of Bethlehem and Netophar, 188. The men of Anatoth, 128. The men of Bet Azmaveth, 42. The men of Kerjath, Jirim, Shephirah, and Berod, 743. The men of Ramar and Geba, 621. The men of Mikmas, 122. The men of Bethel and Ayi, 123. The men of the other, Nebo, 52. The children of the other, Elam, 1,254. The children of Harim, 320. The children of Jericho, 345. The children of Lod, Hadid, and Ono, 
721. The children of Sanar, 3,930. The priests, the children of Yedayayayah, of the house of Yeshua, 973. The children of Emir, 1,052. The children of Peshua, 1,247. The children of Harim, 1,017. The Levites, the children of Yeshua, and of Kadmiel, and the children of Hodvar, 74. The singers, the children of Asaph, 148. The doorkeepers, the children of Shalom, the children of Eta, the children of Talmon, the children of Akub, the children of Hatita, the children of Shovai, 138. The Netanim, the children of Zihar, the children of Hasufar, the children of Tavayoth, the children of Kiros, the children of Siar, the children of Pedon, the children of Lebana, the children of Hagabar, the children of Salmai, the children of Hanan, the children of Gidel, the children of Gahar, the children of Riyar, the children of Rezin, the children of Nikodar, the children of Gazam, the children of Uzar, the children of Phaziar, the children of Besai, the children of Meuni, the children of Nephishim, the children of Bakbuk, the children of Ha Kufa, the children of Ha Hur, the children of Baslit, the children of Mehidar, the children of Harsh, the children of Bark Os. The children of Sisera, the children of Thamar, the children of Nizayar, the children of Hatifar, the children of Solomon's servants, the children of Sotai, the children of Sopharet, the children of Perida, the children of Yala, the children of Darkon, the children of Gidel, the children of Shephatiah, the children of Hatil, the children of Pokeret Hezebiah. The children of Ammon, all the Netanim, and the children of Solomon's servants, 392. Yes, yeah, so these are they that went up from Tel Melar. Tel Harsh A. Cherub Adon and Emir. But they could not show their father's house nor their seed, whether they were of Yisrael. The children of Deliah, the children of Tobiah, the children of Nekoda, six hundred and forty-two, and of the priests, the children of Hoviah, the children of Koz, the children of Barzillai, who took a wife of the daughters of Barzillai the Gileadite, and was called after that name. They sought their genealogical register, but it was not found. Therefore were they as polluted, removed from the priesthood. And the Tershathar said to them, they should not eat of the most holy things, till there stood up the priest with Urim and Thummim. The whole congregation together was 42,360. Besides their servants and their maids, of whom there were 7,337. And they had 245 singing men and singing women. Their horses were 736, their mules 245. The camels 435. The asses 6,720. And some of the chief fathers gave to the work. The Tershathar gave to the treasurer a thousand derricks of gold, fifty basins, five hundred and thirty priests' coats, and some of the chief fathers gave to the treasurer of the work twenty thousand derricks of gold and two thousand two hundred pounds of silver. And that which the rest of the people gave was twenty thousand derricks of gold and 2,000 pounds of silver. 
and 67 priests called. And the priests and the Levites and the doorkeepers and the singers, and some of the people in the Netanim and all Israel dwelt in their cities. And when the seventh month came, the children of Israel were in their cities. So, what are we to make of that chapter, friends? Well, very specific. Everybody is known. Every thought, word, and deed, and need of everyone who has or will ever walk this planet is known. So, um, there are, well, there's really four sections to this chapter, chapter 7. It's, it's a chapter over 70 verses, but it's, it's very simple to understand. Uh, it's the number of perfection, number 7, so it has a view of completion. It has in view uh, the completion of redemption and atonement and salvation and restoration. The wall was built, the finished work of Christ. I had set up the doors. The doorkeepers and the singers and the Levites were appointed for great celebration. I'd rather be a, a, a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of the wicked. Um, it set up the doors, the doorkeepers, singers, and Levites were appointed. And then what's interesting is, is he gave his brother Hanani and Hanani Ar, the ruler of the cities all. Now, the other prime place that the person with that name gets reference is um, in the latter part of the book of Jeremiah. I believe it's in the late 30s of Jeremiah, where you might remember, friends, that Hananiah is the chap that uh, he, he breaks the yoke off the neck of Jeremiah and promises falsely to the Jews that everything will be all right, that the king of Babylon won't destroy Jerusalem. Indeed, but that everything will be fine, which was a complete lie. And Jeremiah says, you shall not live. He will die this year, and sure enough, Hananiah died. But here, this is a good Hananiah, you know. And so Nehemiah, um, his brother is called Hananiah. It doesn't say whether Hananiah Yar was also his brother. There's the two persons named there. But uh, they, they are, the, the ruler of the citadel is Hananiah Yar. His brother Hananiah, they're given charge over Jerusalem because he was a faithful man and feared God above many. What, what a precious descriptive friends and to think of God's estimation of a man of being a faithful man who fears God above many. A precious thing to think of, to think of God esteeming some men uh, as being above other men purely by the measure of their reverence for him. What, what a precious thing, descriptive and uh, term of endearment, to fear God above many. As has been said, the man that feareth God need fear naught else. The fear of Yahweh, the fear of the Lord, ought to be your treasure. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of these deep. By humility and the fear of the Lord is honour, life and riches. And of course, he that feareth is not made perfect in love. So what does that mean? How do those scriptures come together? Well, if you have Christ as your mediator, as your intercessor, as your saviour, and then you have peace with God through the Lord Jesus Christ. And so you don't have fear because you're honourable to the Son. Kiss the Son lest he be angry and you perish in the way. Um, if you have the Son, you have the Father also. If you do not have the Son, you do not have the Father either. And then Nehemiah says, Then the gates of Jerusalem what shouldn't be opened until the sun was hot, and that they should shut the doors and bar them while they stood by, and that there should be appointed watches of the inhabitants of Jerusalem, every one in his watch and every one over against his house. Now the city was large and great, but the people in it were few and no houses were built. Yes, yeah, so there needed to be vigilance because of the enemies. 
There was these wicked men, Sambalak, Tovajar, Geshem, the Arabian, and lots of other wicked men that did not want the Jews. They did not want Jerusalem to be established. They didn't want God's kingdom to be established, the theocratic kingdom uh, of Israel, Jerusalem, of the Jews. And the devil certainly didn't want the Jews to be established. However, what the wicked didn't understand, being deluded, uh, is part of being wicked. They are wicked. That is to say, they've lost their immortality. So they are wicked. And Elohim Yavar knows everything about everything about everything. God is outside of time and inside of time. So God knows the future. You see, and so what they didn't understand was that there is neither counsel, purpose, nor understanding against Jehovah. At the appointed time, the Ancient of Days comes and sets everything in order in every town, in every city, in every nation, in every family, in every human order in the house of God. All mortals live in God's house and the Son is the Son over the Father's house. So uh, there is no counsel against the Lord. The Lord reigns, let the earth rejoice. The Lord reigns, let the earth tremble. Jai Elohim is truth, the living God, the King of eternity. At his wrath, this earth trembles. The nations cannot abide his indignation. So Nehemiah uh, commands Hananiah, and Hananiah are who is given charge of Jerusalem faithful, God-fearing persons, that the gates of Jerusalem should only be opened when the sun was hot. What that means is when it was crystal clear daylight, when they could see any enemies that might be sneaking up. That's what that means. So when the sun was shining brightly, the gates could be open. Um, but at other times, the gates had to be shut and barred. But there had to be appointed watches of the inhabitants of Jerusalem everyone in his watch and everyone over against his house. So this theme of vigilance um, is very, very important and certainly is one of the, the prime features of this book, vigilance. Um, be sober, be vigilant, your enemy, the devile goes around seeking whom he may devour. But when a man or a woman's ways please the Lord, he maketh even their enemies to be at peace with them. Behold, I give you power over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means harm thee. So it's very precious here to think that the inhabitants of Jerusalem had to appoint watchers, persons to watch, everyone in his watch and everyone over against his house. So in those days, vigilance meant physical safety. Um, in these days we live in, very few true Christians are under any kind of physical threat, both spiritually, mentally, and emotionally, persons need to be vigilant. The city was large and great, the people in it were few and no houses were built. So I, I do think also, friends, that this passage of scripture declares the period of time we are in. Think of the patience of Christ Jesus at the present time, waiting for his assembly, his church, his wife, his bride. Only the Lamb's wife, uh, a woman, the Lamb's wife, the Bride of Christ, one woman, made up of hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of millions of Christians, is a suitable counterpart for Jehovah incarnate, for Jesus the Christ. A suitable counterpart was made for Adam. The Lamb's wife is a suitable counterpart for God's precious son, Yeshua HaMashiach. And so I think this scripture, friends, would have in view the present time where the Son of God is patiently waiting for his wife. Um, it's a time where the walls of the city have been built. Salvation, redemption, uh, immortality accomplished for men. However, there was no houses built. That is to say that no humans, no natural humans, have received physical immortality. 
However, establishment has happened, everlasting righteousness has been brought in by the Son of God who died outside the city gates. Um, these city gates we're reading off here. Um, and uh, in dying, Christ has destroyed the devil and death itself. Christ has abolished sin, death and hell for the elect. So some very precious realities to think of. Think of Christians being vigilant, waiting for their houses to be built, waiting to receive physical immortality. Yeah, so we, we see we see four main sections here, friends. We we see the establishment. Uh, of Jerusalem, we see Nehemiah appointing Hananiah and Hananiah to rule Jerusalem, faithful, God fearing men. We see vigilance, very much a theme, and um, safety. And we see that there were no houses built in it. You see, the Babylonians had destroyed Jerusalem, the walls, and the temple of Jehovah. So the next section now is the biggest section, uh, and makes up about 50 verses of this chapter. God puts in Nehemiah's heart to gather together the nobles, the rulers, the people for registration by genealogy. And I found a genealogical register of those that had come up at the first, and I found written in it. So this is very interesting, because you might remember um, that God was angry uh, because uh, Moses numbered Israel. Uh, he counted how many men there were, and God was angry with him for doing that. But here we see sometime later, a thousand years later or so, we see that God puts it in Nehemiah's heart to count the people, not just count them, but register their names, not just their names, their parentage, their lineage, their ancestry. Um, but what's interesting here is is that uh, before he does that, he finds an ex he finds an existing genealogical register of those that had come up at the first. And that's what he reads out in this. So it's quite interesting that God puts in his heart to gather together the nobles, the rulers, the genealogical registration. But before he does that, he finds and reads out this previous genealogical register of everyone that came up from Babylon at the first, you see. Uh, we know that at least a dozen years had elapsed thus far in the writing of this book of Nehemiah. And we saw that in Ezra, the previous book, which are books of the same exactly the same time period, the contemporaneous. Um, and we see here that these persons uh, had been established in Israel for some time, you know, um, for, for well over a decade. And so he, be, he before he, he makes a current genealogical registry, he reads out the existing uh, precise genealogical register and that's what he does right up until uh, till, till verse 63. Um, and there's two features there at the end of that reading. One is that there's persons that they can't confirm whether they're Jews or not. You see, so they'd been in Babylon 70 years, so there would have been interbreeding, this kind of thing. So they wouldn't have known precisely. There'd have been persons that may be maybe not sure if they were Jewish. And it says there in verse 61, there were those that from Tel Milar, Tel Harsh, Ah, and Cherub Adam and Emir, but they couldn't show their father's house nor their seed whether they were from Israel. So natural persons who weren't sure, they couldn't prove uh Nehemiah and the other leading men were unsure whether they were actually Jews. Um, and then there were these other persons that claimed to be of the tribe of the priests, but they couldn't prove uh, that they were... Uh, they, they were sought in that they looked for them in the genealogical race, but they couldn't find them. So they couldn't prove they were priests. Priests had special privileges. So they were removed from the priesthood. So for me, this business of persons that, uh, that that couldn't prove they were Jews and the persons that couldn't prove that they were priests, for me, that's that's the unsaved 
that's the damned. That's what that represents, persons that did not bring forth fruit unto righteousness to eternal life. Uh, persons that have perhaps tasted of the good word of God, um, but had not declared salvation, had not declared the Torah, the law of the Lord, that had not been holy and committed to Jehovah. So it was said they mustn't eat of the most holy things till there stood up the priest with Urim and Thummim. It's a precious verse. Verse 65 speaks of the Son of God. The Urim and the Thummim had to do with discernment, priestly discernment, and every true Christian uh, has a measure of the gift of discernment. That's what that speaks of, Urim, Thummim. Um, so it, not eating of the most holy things, that, that really is the body and blood of Christ Jesus. Um, until there stands up the priest. What a great thing to think of the Son of God standing up, friends. To noble things he doth stand. And then it tells you the total of the persons were 42,360. And also then their servants and maids who were 7,337 plus 245 singing men and singing wisdom, uh, singing women. So what's that tot up to? Uh, it's, well, it's, it's just a whisker of under 50,000, actually. If you add that, those three figures up, 42, 49. Yeah, it's just a whisk of under 50,000. Their horses, and it tells you how many horses they had, 736, 245 mules, 435 camels, 6,720 asses. It was all very precise. Then you have the last segment of this chapter, friends, these last four verses. Some of the chief fathers gave to the work. The Tershathar gave to the Triazure a thousand derricks of gold. 50 basins, 530 priests, courts. So these were all, that was a lot. That was a very substantial donation. Some of the chief fathers gave to the Tereusure of the work 20,000 derricks of gold and 2,200 pounds of silver. And that which the rest of the people gave was 20,000 derricks of gold and 2,000 pounds of silver and 67 priests, courts. So that's a lot, friends. That's uh, 41,000 derricks of gold, uh, 4,200 pounds of silver, and uh, 597 priest coats. And the priests, the Levites, the doorkeepers, the singers, and some of the people in the Netanim, and all the Israel dwelt in their cities. And when the seventh month came, the children of Israel were in their cities. Hmm, that's interesting. It's got a comma there, but there's no nothing after the comma. Oh, it should be a full stop. That's a mistake in the Bible gateway. But it's not quite grammatically correct, that sentence. Let me just check that. And the priests and the Levites and the doorkeepers and the singers and some of the people and the Netanim and all Israel dwelt in their cities. Oh, that's, that's the, they've added on. Um... They've added on there on this publicgateway.com the first part of chapter 8. But that's okay. So anyway, the idea is at the end of the chapter there and that they dwelt in their cities. So that's establishment, that's peace, that's well-being, uh, that's shalom. Great shalom of those that love the Lord the Lord. Nothing causes them to stumble. Well, friends, I do so trust that was useful. Uh, what we're really reading about is God's righteousness, God's holiness, God's kingdom, 
God's goodness being expressed upon the earth in time. That's what's being, uh, that's what's in view in these these chapters of Nehemiah uh, six and seven particularly. Um, the work is the work of righteousness, goodness, and truth. Um, it's a great thing, friends, to think of the motivation of Jesus. Uh, righteousness, holiness, truth. Good food help others go on quietly. Wonderful. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Well, friends, stay strong under the blood and the spirit in the scripture, declaring the full name in your homes. The Lord Jesus the Christ, Adonai, Yeshua HaMashiach. And we'll be back soon with another broadcast. Baruch, Hava Hashem, Adonai, Yehovah Elohim. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of Adonai, Yehovah Elohim. Shalom, shalom.